Yo, this is your boy YD, aka Serious Business. We live here, back to the source documentary with the legendary Boo Cham, Abdubakar Cham. Okay, we here in ATL talking about the Back to the Source documentary. That's the only thing the whole world have in common. This man is a legendary um, personality in the music industry in, uh, in America, in the world today, because you know everybody knows the face. Boo Cham, how you doing? So baby. I'm good, man. How, how are you? you? My love. My son, I got from okay, that's right. <laughs> yeah, I got to start off. Yeah, right, 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 right. <laughs> so, uh, for those who don't know, can you just bring it back and you bring uh, bring us back to your resume, like um, how long you've been in the game and uh, like yeah, the, started, the headlines of your accomplishment? Yeah, I started in around 2003, um, with my brother's first record, um, and then it went from there, from ain't all his albums to. Discovering um, T Pain and you know uh, discovering Lady Gaga with him, um, Jeremiah um, going off to be the vice president of Def Jam Music Group and working with artists like Kanye West, Jay Z, Rihanna, manager Chris Brown. Um, yeah, just been doing it for been doing it for a while, but just getting started. You know what I mean? So that's where we at with it. Just getting started? Yeah, just getting started. Wow, thousand percent. I'm in a whole different cycle now. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm I'm back in love with the music, but my focus is at an all-time high. You know, so. What was the game like when you got started? Um, obviously it was no social media, so you know it was it wasn't as easy to market yourself like it is now. Mm -hmm. um, and I feel that the talent level was higher because to be noticed, your stuff had to be really good. You're right, um, and yeah, that's really about it, you know. Um, I mean, now <clears throat> I like what's going on, I'm loving what you know people are bringing to the table. You know, I never get caught up in the conversation of old rapper, young rapper, new school, old school, because you know, everybody has a form of music. So, who who is anybody to say, well, this person is young and you know, music is not as good. You know, it, you know, it's mumble rap or this and that, because it's a different generation. So I just enjoy all of it. I try to enjoy all of it and take it for what it is. Isn't it that the fact that you know you um, looking at your position as an A, uh, um, you've been an A and R, you've been a CEO, right. you've been a vice president and right. all of that, and looking at your position, you can say that, but some people won't say that. Agree. I agree. Um, I mean, yeah, I, 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 I agree. You know, people. You know, but for me, you know, I think I mean, so all, you're looking at the business aspect, right? But some no, people but look I'm at also it. looking at the creative aspect as well. You know what I mean? You got to look at it like, <clears throat> you know, put it this way. You know, when you were younger and mm -hmm. you were doing and you were loving hip hop, right? Mm -hmm. Being in Africa, loving hip hop wasn't the norm, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you kind of was on it early. You was you know, trying to find ways to bridge the gap. Yeah. But more importantly, people were like, yo, why are you listening to that? As a kid, it was like, yo, this is this is trash, this, is, this, this isn't good. The older people were saying that, right? Mm -hmm. Well now, you know, they're young now. And, you know, so it's, everybody has their time. Every generation has their time, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah. Best believe, you know, the EPMD days, those guys wasn't looking at Jay Z and Nas like, well, I'm, I take that back. Jay Z and Nas are different type of dudes, right? Mm -hmm. But they wasn't other artists from that generation. Was kind of stepping back, like, yo, what is these guys doing? Dials effects, so you know, artists that you didn't really understood who they were at first, mm -hmm. and they became mm -hmm. legendary. So I think it's just different, you know, different generations. Everybody got their time. Yeah. And now it's you know. These kids time. So throughout all those time until now, like what are your biggest accomplishments? Oh, man, to be honest, our biggest accomplishment is seeing artists like David O, Wizkid, you know, Wally, all these kids, you know, Dip, all these kids have to be able to have a chance to express themselves being from Africa. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we, we bridge the gap. It wasn't that easy, you know, obviously my brother being from Africa, me being from Africa, it wasn't us being dark skinned, like it was a it was a whole bunch of barriers that we had to break. So now these other kids have an opportunity to 
to, to express themselves to the world. So that was our goal, and now it's, it's coming about, so I'm happy about that, man. That's what's up. You know what I mean? Hip hop today, after 40 plus years, is the only thing that the whole world have in common. Uh, this is the Back to the Source documentary. We're trying to put all four continents on one DVD and bring them back home to Senegal for the festival. Like, how do you look at that idea? I think it's amazing. I think, you know, um, you know I think it's, it gives people the understand, understanding to understand, for one, where it comes from. You know, it gives you an opportunity to see it from different perspectives as well. You know, because everybody has their perspective. You know, growing up in Senegal, you have your perspective in life. You grow up in New York, your perspective. You know, you grow up in Europe. So it gives you an opportunity to not have to live there, but still be able to see it. So I think what you're doing is really dope. You know, it's bringing, it's bringing, it's bringing them close to the reality of I having to be there. You know what I mean? So that's dope. Um, like back home, when you look at the, some artists today, um, it's like y you have to be a rapper slash activist for your voice or your music to be heard. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? Say that, I'm sorry, say that one more time. Like, you have to be a rapper slash activist. Back then? Nah, right now. Okay. For your voice or your music to be heard. You think so? I mean, that's what some people think, though. You have to go nah, against... I, I actually think it's the opposite. I think now, kids are not that vocal about what's going on around them, right? I think back then, you know, Nas had, a, he had an understanding of what was happening around him. Jay-Z had an understanding of what was happening in the Marcy and the project, even Biggie for to a certain extent, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, you know, all these people, you know, you, you can hear in their music, about their story and the times. Now these kids are just about, you know, having fun, doing drugs, fucking bitches. I know, like. It's still a little bit different. Not to cut you off, that's America. Right. I'm talking oh, about back, back home. home. Oh. The fact that some people think that you have to be that, nah, that think, active for your voice or your music to be you. heard. No, I think that's a, that, that's a mis misconception. I think yeah. you just have to be yourself. You know, because everybody is not an activist. Mm. You know, you can, everybody doesn't, you can believe in it, but you might not know how to, you know, uh, 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 you know, you might not know how to pronounce it. You might not know how to art articulate it. You know what I mean? You True. got, right? Yeah. You know, in, in your in your raps, and yeah. that's cool because you can, you may be good at something else. So I think that, you know, you gotta just find your niche and what fits you, and be the greatest person at mm. that. You know what I mean? That's true. So what do you think about hip hop and politics? Do you think both can go together? I think it's, man, I think hell yeah. I think because we have the biggest voice in the world. Mm -hmm. You know, hip hop right now is the biggest genre in the world. It's never been like this today. Mm -hmm. True. Never. I agree on that. You know what I'm saying? Now because it's like, you know, like we're taking over this every shit. Every urban area on planet Earth is governed by hip hop, no matter where Thousand you go. Thousand percent, yeah. right? So our voice now is more powerful than it's ever been. So I think that, you know, you know, now it is our, you know, we have an obligation to be able to speak on certain things and, and, and give our opinion and our voice, you know what I mean? The last time we did an interview, you was talking about your own record label, Bull Vision. Mm -hmm. what, 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 what's, what, what about it? It's moving. Um, it's moving. Yeah, it's, it's going. I signed um, three artists that I really love. I got this one kid from Kenya. His name is KC Pluto. Mm -hmm. Really, really talented. Um, I'm launching him next month. And um, yeah, I'm just, I mean, I'm, I'm back with Avengers. I never left, but I left, but I never left. I left my own marriage. Obviously, you know, we had the Akon Lighting Africa thing that mm -hmm. what was, um, that was a dream that we had for years. And oh, you was on that too? Yeah, of course. I mean, it's everything that's family owned over here. All you know right. what I mean? Right. But um, yeah, but yeah, so it was something that we, we always talked about and you know, and, and so to be able to fully engage, you know, I had to really get my hands dirty and, and, and handle that mm -hmm. and give it some real attention. You know, because obviously being back home, we know that to have any business home, you gotta be there. You can't be here and try to run a business in Africa. No way. This thing gonna happen. No way. You know what I mean? so, <laughs> no way. So, um, I'm gonna ask you like um, a very serious question because some people don't understand why. Some people trying to figure out why. Some people maybe have an idea about why it's not happening. Uh, back home, it's like it's on everybody's lips basically 
And I'm going to tell you that because I'm on the radio, I'm on TV, I'm on stage. I know what's up and I know what people are talking about. Right. Why Akon and his brother are not trying to help African and Senegalese artists instead of going to sign other West African artists? Mm, I mean, I think that, you know, for us, <clears throat> for, for one, we look at the whole Africa as one. Right, we don't want to separate. I mean, like, it's not like, well, I'm from Senegal, so I can't, I can't work with a Nigerian artist or a Kenyan artist. Or, I think that's we can't, we can't do that. Mm -hmm. We already doing that in America. You know, we break it down blocks, and we don't own none of this shit. In Africa, we own everything, right? This is that's that's our land. So, I think for one, we have to look at everything like it's one because they're all our brothers. Mm -hmm. And we should, you know, wish for the for, for anybody and everybody to have success and cheer for them, right? That's one. For two, um, you know, I, to be honest, man, I, I haven't really, you know, I think it's gonna be tough until I find an artist that, that's multi, that is, that's able to do music because I'm in America and it's gonna be hard for me to break an Africa, an African artist in Africa. That's not my market. I'm African. I go there, I come back, I visit, I, but I don't know the, the land. In America, I know the land. So, to, so if I was to do anything with an artist from Africa, whether it's from Senegal or whatever case may be, they would have to be able to break in America because this is my strong point. If I was to sign your manager in Africa, I wouldn't be doing it no justice and I don't want to work with anybody that I can't fully help 100% right I wouldn't know what right. to do really right other than me be there and, you know go in the studio and make records I wouldn't know where to market you I wouldn't know you know what station to take you to because this is a different market and I would have to be there full time and can I do that t today no right I got a family here so therefore you know now if you were Senegalese, as a, as, a, as a Senegalese artist, like Shaq West, who's like my little brother, mm -hmm. if you're able to do what he did, which is rap in English, to where, then that's different. Then I'm all, I'm all, I'm all for it. Okay, so to you, the language sometimes can be a barrier. That's a, yeah, that's, that's, the only, that's the only mishap. If you notice, I mean... From your own perspective. From my perspective, and I, and I haven't seen it happen yet. Okay. I haven't seen no artist break in America as a rapper in another language. Right. I haven't seen it, right? And I'm not gonna say it's impossible mm -hmm. because nothing is impossible, but it's gonna definitely be an uphill battle, you know? So right. I think, you know, I think instead of an artist in Senegal saying, I'm, I'm Senegalese and I'm a rapper Senegalese and I don't wanna, that's cool, but just understand that you're gonna be very regional. You're gonna only be big in Senegal. So if you're okay with that, mm. then that's okay. But if you wanna be big around the world, like my brother was, and like, you know what I mean? You have to be able to, you know, because one thing about music, it's, 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 a, um, it's, a, it's a world language. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like it's a universal language, bro. Yeah. You know that? Music doesn't have no barriers. No, so man. It, it right? But I gotta have to at least, even if I don't fully understand you, melodically, I gotta feel like I understand you, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and so, rapping is a little bit different from singing. At least so you can bop your head to the music. Mm, yeah. Right? So I think, you know, I wanna tell my young brothers in Senegal is that I don't want them to be stubborn and, and stuck in their ways. Because mm -hmm. I think that. There's a lot of talent there and opportunity. So sometimes you have to come out your shell to be bigger than who you want to be. Cool. My brother was the same way. Mm. My brother used to rap in Jamaican, right? And I was, he was really good at it. And I was like, bro, this is cool. But it's not but taking where you we way. trying to go, you got to change your whole style. And he was against it at first. And then at some minute he was like, you know what? You're right. I gotta change. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And he changed and it changed everything for us. So I think that a lot of times, you know, don't be stuck in your way. Try something new and see where it gets you. All right. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, the whole world is watching this documentary right now. If you have a message to the young artists in the world that's trying to come up, what do you have to tell them? Um, I would say, man, 
you know, you're now is the best time ever um, to be in music. Um, you know, because now the world is one with the internet. You know what I mean? It wasn't it was a time where songs would be played in America, and you won't get them for like until like six months in Africa. But now, if a song comes out today, you get it back home in the same day. So the opportunities now are endless. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, but I always, I always say, work on your craft until you're ready. Don't, don't rush the process. You know what I mean? Because you only have one time to make a real impression. So take your time, get it right. But this is the best time to be in. I would, I would encourage whoever is a musician, mm-hmm. entertainer, man, jump in it. It's the time. Right. right. So, um, like, what do you want everybody to know about Bootchamp that they don't know about? Um. So I'm just talking to my cousin, he's trying to leave me. Yo, chill out, man. <laughs> um, what I want them to know. Man, um, I mean, they know so much about me already through just social media and just me speaking, but um, man, you know, I'm just, I'm for the people, man. You know, I'm at this point in my life, um, I'm blessed to be able to have the things that I want, right? Now I'm trying to leave a legacy. More importantly, I'm trying to empower other people. You know what I mean? I'm, it's, I, I'm okay. I'm gonna be okay, and my name is gonna, you know, be what it is. But it's about giving somebody else the opportunity that I didn't have. So that's really why I'm at with it right now. You know. That's what's up. Hey, good luck, man. Thank you, brother. Good luck. You see, we really appreciate it. Good luck with what you're doing, man. I think we really people need to know that this documentary. The reason why it was important for me to be here with you and talk and spend time is because. Mm-hmm. I know that you've been doing this for almost five or six years, you know, and, and, and you That's you know. Gal Saint Hip Hop Awards. This documentary is just going to be the first. I've been working on it right. for five, six years. Right. But now it's time to put it all together. Right. But listen, though, but just think about that. Five, six years is a long time. I know. So for you to have the dedication and the love for the music, mm-hmm. that's what's driving you. It's not about the money. Yeah. You understand? Mm-hmm. You know, you're not saying if I put this out, I'm going to make 10 to 15 million dollars. This, you want to spread the word, you want to spread the information. And I think we also have to get back to doing things for the love of it, not for the money. Right? Because the money's going to come. Do it for the love, and the money will always come. Thank you, so, man. I really so thank appreciate, you, man. It. appreciate it. Before we get to my last question, mm-hmm. what is the most dangerous thing about this music industry? Oh, man. man. One word. Just one word. Fake. <laughs> <laughs> Keep it real. Back to the mm-hmm. source, 2019, 2020, be on the lookout, it's coming, okay? We're going so, global with this one, okay? Part one, Bootcham is in the house, serious business, point blank. Mm-hmm.